Latex. You mean latex? Latex? Not latex. Not latex. That sounds two totally different things. Indeed, indeed, my friend, yes. I was talking about different ways for your monster slot. How many of you guys saw Van Helsing? Yeah, if we could create a great cat, we'd never turn in the book on that movie. All that beautiful bean footage. Now, guys, when you make a monster, you have to figure out first what you want your monster to look like, and then the best way to bring that look to life. For Frankenstein's monster, Igor, Greg used traditional prosthetics makeup. That meant that after Schuler Hensley right there would sit in the makeup chair for five hours while layers of silicone and latex were glued to his face. We gave him colored contacts, copper dental appliances, then we stuck him in a full body foam rubber suit with arm and leg extensions to give him his colossal size. The effect is very dramatic. Where will you be when your diarrhea comes back? <laughs> ah, gotta go, gotta go, gotta ride now, gotta go, gotta go right now. Gotta go, gotta go right now. Do you know these folks might be interested in how long it becomes a makeup artist? Because it looks like a lot of fun. Well, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, too. Yeah, yeah I have to apprentice uh, for a long time to learn the trade. I have apprenticed with Rick Baker. Well, I've heard of him. You want an Oscar, right? Uh huh. He's won six. Oh, six. Six. Harry the Hansons, Men in Black, Men in Professor. Oh, I remember Grinch. Uh -huh. Well, uh, this one he got his first Oscar for right here. Kids, what is this movie right here? E.T. E yeah. There's E.T. He's trying to get his pistol. E.T. The Revenge. This is where, no, this is an American Werewolf in London. This is where Rick got his first Oscar for transforming actor David Naughton right in front of our very eyes into Joan Rivers. <laughs> and he kind of loved it so much that he created the category for special effects makeup. And it's, it still holds up to this day. I mean, yeah. It's a, an accurate makeup, right? Mm -hmm. But his face is changing shit now. Do they do that with makeup? Uh, it's not just makeup. Now, that was back in the 80s before we had digital technology. Right. So the, what they did was they fed that actor a block of cheese. And then a bag of prunes. <laughs> and they waited. Cheese. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm sure. You hold the power of cheese. Cheese. <laughs> 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 now, every time you're using kids, we're changing the hands. Wow. Now what Rick did was he took a mold of David Cotton's head and shoulders, and from that he made a movable fiberglass understructure based on the actor's face, right? Now he cut out these separate areas and he fitted them with pistons that run on pneumatics. That's air pressure. Which is air pressure that, that push the chambers in and out. Exactly, up and down. When you layer your latex wolf mask on the top, this stuff stretches like real human skin. So it's very lifelike. You've got acrylic teeth, this is real human hair. That's real hair. That's real hair. Where'd you get that? Britney Spears. <laughs> Still smells like crazy. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Van Helsing a minute ago. They had wearables. They used this technology. CGI. Okay, that's a computer generated image. That's right, I brought a clip for that. Oh, yeah. Now, guys, as computer creators, more often than not these days, we are turning to the computer to either enhance or totally create our monsters. Now, sometimes a monster has to do something really wild and, and bizarre that it, you just couldn't pull off with makeup. And that's when we create a computer model, like Dracula or For the Prize. Now, these were hybrid effects. They were half human, half digital animation. We take our live actor in front of a blue screen, shoot our live action, combine it with our animation, and here's what you get. So, some new technology applied with the old technology. What's amazing? Best. Four months out of time. Hey, folks, Mark James. How about it, huh? Yeah. Take a little trip project we had a time. Um, do we do a little trip? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, I'll be glad to help. Can you put on this high voltage vest? Uh, uh, what? <laughs> this low voltage vest? No, 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 no. You keep saying voltage. It's practically voltage. No, there's electricity involved. You're talking about your There's no one getting this right. 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 Could you put the glove on Krista's right hand for me? Oh, it's a it's a tool for the thumb. I see. Krista, um, here, let me move your glasses for you. Yeah, I don't want them to melt. <laughs> Just put those in the other. <laughs> Krista, have you ever seen a film called The Green Mile? Yes. Try not to think about it. Maybe you can look like a princess. <laughs> and Krista is going to be a high tech volunteer that brings the creature I've created to life. Drum roll, please! Ladies and gentlemen, here is my little boy, it's Eddie! <laughs> He's like 
and Scooby-Doo on steroids. <laughs> and then you, Chris, and you're going to break it to life. You are wearing a telemetry suit. That means that you cover it. Now, in a moment, when I turn on the power, you're going to feel a jolt of electricity shoot through your spine. And you're going to go, <laughs> just for like three to five seconds. When you wake up, you won't even remember that. It's all you'll be like, why am I wet? But then after that, when you move, your movements are electronically transmitted to Eddie. So when you move, he moves. You control him, like your husband. <laughs> Go ahead and face Eddie. Put your hands down to your side. Only move when I ask you to, so you don't fry him out. I'm going to power him up. Oh, no, no. It's pretty simple. is E.T., the, one of the most popular kids' movie in the 80s, to be exact, 82, maybe. So, E.T., or extraterrestrial. Spielberg, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the E.T. adventure, but I'm afraid we don't have much time, so I'm going to cut right to the chase. E.T. needs your help. Now, we've just received an urgent message from E.T.'s teacher, Botanicus, calling for E.T. to come home right away. You see, a big problem has developed three million light years away on E.T.'s home world, the Green Planet. E.T.'s friends are in danger because their planet is dying. Remember what E.T.'s friends look like because it's going to be up to you to help E.T. find them once we get him home and there's not a moment to lose because only E.T.'s magic healing touch can save his friends and bring his planet back to health. E.T. must go home and only you can help him. Amen. Ah, E.T. Trouble. That's right, E.T. So why don't you show these people how we're going to get you back to the green planet? You and E.T. will be making your three million light year journey on these bikes, but don't worry, you don't have to pedal. You will need an interplanetary passport. So before you leave the ET, tell your first name to one of our assistants, and they'll give you your pass. Oh. Sounds like ET's ready to go. So good luck, everyone. And remember, ET's counting on you, and so am I. Oh. It's up to you to save this planet so that he may visit us again. 